What's up, what's up? Oh, let me fix something. What's up with this thing here? Hold on. That's better. What's going on? How's everybody? How's everybody? Cash money, what's up, family? Make sure you guys come in, you like. Jay Evans, what's up with him? How's everybody? How's everybody? What's up, fam? What's up, Helena, baby? Bro, man, what's up? Bro, man, just chilling. <laughs> what's happening with it? Oh, bro, man, just chilling. I'm just chilling too, family. Malik R, what up with it, family? What's happening? Oh, you saw that? You heard the interview, Helena? What's up, Cortez? Thank you. Oh, I'm all right. Sean C. G Money, what's up, family? Ace, hey. Johnny Dogworth, what's up with him? Mo, what's up? K, what's up? Stan Nash, what's happening? You just finished listening, huh? Yeah, we're just trying to educate as many as we can, Helena. You know how we do it. Now, look, you guys, when you come in, don't forget to like the video when you come in. It's like 55 people in here, nine likes. So just like the video when you guys come in, if you would. Hey, Forte, what's up with it? Macklin Choice, what's happening? Mr. Povo, consistent, consistently here. What's up, family? Taylor May, what's happening? Tony, what's up, family? Lisa Wilcox, hey, hey, hey. Chris Jackson, Galveston, Texas, in this thing. You know, Brian kicking off that first 10. Love you, Ford family. Fair play. Who is that? Wyan Williams, Brother Wise, Andre Blake, Don Williams, Farrell. Who's that? I don't wear glasses either, y'all. I'm just back a little further. Oh, Ron. Okay, family. Frank Hicks, Thomas Valentine. Yeah, make sure you guys come in, you guys like. 82 in the room, 34 likes. Make sure you like the video. Detroit in the house. Thank you, Immaculate. Appreciate that. Calvin McDougal, what's up? Tony Davis with that 9, with that 10 coming in. Thank you, family. Sean with that 10 coming in. Bless you, family. Dean, signing on. We got 91. We'll wait till we get over 100 and we'll get cracking. David Morris, hey, family. Like the video when you guys come in, you guys. Suave, what's up, family? Mr. Melvin, what's happening? New Orleans in the house. Lived there in New Orleans East Kenilworth Apartments back in the day. Like the video. Once you guys come in, like. Oh, there go my, my, 
my student and my loved one, Joel. Taboo. Thank you guys both for that 25. Hit that like button. I do mentor some time. I just don't have as much time as I did before, Sean, for clients. Sometimes I'll be backed up maybe a month because I'll be, you know, I'm not, I don't do as much life coaching as I did before. But if you get at me on my, on my uh, email, Andre L. Taylor at Yahoo, we can talk about when I might have some time to do something. The $300 an hour, just for everybody to know. And in person, it's $500 an hour. Like the video, you guys, and we're about to get cracking in just one second. Got 111 people in the room. Remember, Lars, what's up, family? Thank you, family. Yes, yeah, time to get that smoke, real knowledge. Yes, indeed, Brian Williams, what's happening? Like the video, and um, James, thank you for that 10. Dominion, yes, one of our most powerful videos. Alex G, Black Excellence, what's Yes, indeed, like Michael. And Knowledge Search. All right, so make sure you guys like the videos. 122 people in here, only 62 likes. Make sure you bring that up. You ready to get into politics? Ain't no question. We're ready to overcome everything and conquer everything. Okay, the subject. Give me my mountain. You know, we talk about many subjects, and I want to talk about some spiritual things today. I want to talk about, um, you know, Life has been so dang watered down that um, in many instances, it's hard for people to believe in the Most High. And I want to specifically talk about why is that? Why, why the Most High is not communicating to us? And what we have to do um, to get that contact and that real relationship going? I'm not talking about this church stuff because, you know, people throw a lot of things out there in the church, but there's not been any manifestation in the church for a very, very long time. You know, not nothing solid enough where the world has to sit back and take note. Not no, not no Old Testament manifestation, you know what I'm saying? Where, where, where countries feared uh, the Most High and the people that were submitted to the Most High. There's none of that going on today. There's a whole bunch of talk but really none of those manifestations going on like it was in Kemet or Egypt when they left, uh, when, when, when Hebrews, black people, left uh, Egypt and submitted the whole land, you know. So uh, God, to me, has to represent that in my life. Or I don't, I'm not interested in, in serving this, this idea of what God is. You know what I'm saying? And that, um, you know, I guess my expectation of the Most High, Troy D, love you, baby. Thank you for that 50. My expectations of the Most High is this. You give me what you require of me, and you let me know in return what that allowance in my life gives me. You feel me? So reason why I wanted to start this subject with Give Me My Mountain and talk about some spiritual things today because there's so many things out there being said and there's so much convolution in the earth that nobody can really get any clarity about whether it's Jehovah, whether it is Yah uh, Yahweh, uh, Yahweh, uh, uh, Allah, Buddha, this stuff is confusing. You know what I'm saying? So extended clips. Thank you for that two dollars. This stuff is is this stuff is uh, 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 um is is confusing. And so I'm always thinking, would a real God stand up? You know, they used to have a game called the dating game, and. They used to have three dudes trying to date one woman. They'd give all these three dudes all these questions, and all of them will be named like Mike, uh, you know, Mike Turner. So at the end, they would say, will the real Mike Turner stand up? You know, 
and see if she got the real Mike Turner. Well, I think that's kind of what we need to be doing today, especially if you growing up and you're confused. Uh, would a real God stand up? Can you make yourself clear to this game? <laughs> you feel me? Can you make yourself clear? And if there's a God out there, uh, you should want to separate and substantiate yourself from every other God out there. You should want to uh, solidify yourself as the real God. Would a real God stand up around this piece? You know, so that's kind of how I felt about everything. So when I start having visions and dreams and stuff, Vince, thank you, family, for that 20. Uh, and when I start reading scriptures and stuff, you know, I was reading these wonderful things that was going on with people in the Old Testament. And I was thinking, why don't you ever see none of that stuff today? And if the scriptures say that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, why are not we seeing these miracles and all this stuff today? And why all these churches keep talking about it, but they at the bottom of the totem pole. They got churches that look like they're raggedy. You know what I'm saying? And they're always begging for something, ain't got nothing. But yet you got the almighty God in your possession. You know what I'm saying? Some reason that just never added up to me and it sounded like game. Because I was from the streets, I had to look at it like that. That sounds like some game. You want something, but you're not willing to give a residual back and forth out of what you want? It just sounds like some game to me. You know? So what I decided is to take some fundamentals. I decided to take some fundamentals. And make sure you like the video if you're in the room. There's a story about some Hebrew spies that were sent to Canaan to spy out this land that's supposed to be given to our people. Now, God said he was going to give it to our people. Moses sent them spies to check out what the land looked like. Go check out and see what that looks like over there. And come back and let us know what you saw. So all these spies went, maybe seven of them. And when they got there and they began to look at the land that God said was going to be theirs, guess what? They saw some giants in the land. Yeah, actual giants in the land. And so it's recorded in the scriptures. They said that these men are giants and we ain't nothing but some grasshoppers in compared to these giants over here. What God talking about? He going to give us this land. We got to fight these giants. So all the men was all petrified and scared. And those men went back and broke the morale of the people. And there were two men, Joshua and Caleb that came back with a different report and said, you know what? We could take the land. Irregardless of the giants that they seen in the land, they said we could take that land. So guess what? The other spies that came back with that bad report, like I said, broke the morale of the people. Thank you for that 10 miles. So people were so discouraged you know, and full of doubt. And when the time came for them to possess the land, God was so mad at the doubt in us at the time, the unbelief in us at the time, that the promised land that was only a three days journey, God kept Hebrew people in the wilderness for 40 years until all the men 20-something and up died off. All the doubters, all the unbelievers, all the people that didn't believe in what God told them they can go accomplish, irregardless of the giants they've seen in the land. They all died off in that 40-year circle that we were in because of our doubt and our unbelief. And because... Uh, uh, 
Joshua and Jacob, uh, Joshua and Caleb, was so courageous, Joshua began to lead the people when Moses died. And Caleb was the only one alive other than those other, uh, uh, other than uh, Joshua. So they entered into the promised land, and, and, Josh, and Caleb was promised his own land. Yes, that's right. Yeah. The Nephilim. That's what the giants were called, the Nephilim. But I'm getting somewhere. I, need, I just need to give the backstory so that I can bring it to our day and our own reality and explain to you some of the things we're dealing with today are some of the same things that they dealt with, that we dealt with as a people back then thousands of years ago. So, they got into the promised land with all these beautiful things that the Most High had said we would have. The land flowing with milk and honey and all these wonderful things. So we got into the promised land and Caleb, when he got there, he was 40 years old when he went out to spy out the land and he was 80 years old when he got into the promised land. And the scripture says that he was the same as he was when he was 40. He didn't lose any strength. He was just as strong, just as had as much vitality in himself. And he, he possessed the land. And then when he got there, Caleb said, now give me my mountain. <laughs> I done stood the test of time. Give me what belongs to me. You feel me? Give me my mountain around this piece, is what Caleb said. And he got his mountain. Ace, thank you for that $2. So, today, I'm telling you guys, there's a promised land for us. And the situation is equivalent to what their situation was equivalent back then. They're giants in the land. The giants we face today, systems, banks, corporations, government, those are giants. And some people think, because you hear it all the time when you talk to us, man, you got, we got to dismantle the system. They're not saying conquer the system. We got to do away with the system. So I don't want to work with the system. Right? Because they're fearful of those giants. You see, I'm not fearful of any giants. Based upon one thing. That Caleb had and that Joshua had. And that the, all the other men did not have. They knew that if God promised them something, that there was nothing in the earth or in all existence that could stop it from happening. And this is where I want to bring the education. This is where you bring your whole mind. I used to have a friend that used to always say that. Bring your whole mind. This is where you bring your whole mind. Where we're about to get into it. So I want you to listen and, and tap in. Right? So... If the Most High have declared something to you, right? He said to you, I'm going to do something for you. I want you to know it does not mean that God is going to hand you something like this. That's not how that works. Because most people think God said he was going to give me a car. God said he's going to give me a new house. God said he's going to promote me in my job. God said this. God said this. And they believe that God himself is going to reach down and do that himself for you. He's going to have it in his hand, and he's going to say, here, here it is, right here. Right? That's not how it works. There is something you're going to have to do to possess it. Because God wants to develop a maturity in you. Listen to what I'm saying. The Most High wants to develop a maturity in you. So the scripture says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. 
right? Something that's laid up for the just, or something's laid up over here, is that coming to you? The scripture said the wealth of the wicked is laid up. Here it is right here. Is laid up for the just. Is it going to come to you? Is it going to walk over to you? Is it going to be like it's here? No, because he said it's laid up here. Because he wants you to go get it. He wants to affirm inside of you that that indeed is yours. Now go get it. But there's a mountain in the way. Irregardless of that mountain, go get it. But people are doubting. My family said that I can't do it and I'll never be nothing. They don't believe God said I could have it. God says, go get it. My friends are saying that that's not God. God said, go get it. Well, I have this impediment. I can't do it because of this. I don't have no money. I don't. God said, go get it. Which is what I want to explain to you about getting something from the Most High. He indeed has declared that it's yours. Now, based upon that word, it should create in you a fire, a determination, an unrelenting pursuit of ownership of what the Most High have declared is yours. But you are waiting for something first. Thank you, Pierre, for that $10. To enable you to go get it. I had a, I had a student one time, and I was teaching her. And she's very, very brilliant, right? And I can talk to you about her name because she's been in here. It's Rita. I was teaching Rita G one time. And Rita is very smart, very intellectual. And I told Rita, I said, Rita, you are the kind of person, you're brilliant, and I respect that. You are the kind of person that before you make a move, you have to do all the research. You have to find everything about what this move will require you. And you have to be satisfied with all that research that you have discovered in order for you to make a move. I said, the information I have won't help you. My information won't help you. Because my information requires you to move even if you don't have what you think you need to have in order to possess what you're going to get. Did you hear what I'm saying to you? It requires a level of faith that I'll understand after I achieve it. Sometimes you won't understand until after the fact. Ooh, I'm talking to somebody out there. Sometimes you won't understand until after the fact. But I told her, you don't have the ability. That genius in your world means nothing with this information that I'm teaching you. It doesn't add up. Because sometimes you can't figure out the ways of the Most High. He wants you to believe enough that as you move, even without feeling that you have all the necessary things that you think you need, he wants you to feel that God the Most High is big enough to facilitate you during your movement. During your movement. Um, I have some white people that's a part of my organization. And I always have to explain to some of them, listen, because of your privilege, because of how you have positioned yourself and been positioned in life, there are things that you have that line up that enables you to reach an objective that you're trying to reach. I said, but I'm a black man. I come from a disadvantaged position. So disadvantages have to become a normal way of life to me. I have to make that normal to me, right? 
I don't have the capacity or the time to wait around for everything to look right before I move. I just have to know God has given it to me. And if I know the Most High has given it to me, I'm not concerned about the steps getting there. I'm just, I'm just concerned about moving. I'm going to move in faith to possess what he already said I could have. Do you understand that? So it really gives us an advantage because we never need to wait for things to look like it's right to go possess the land. We move because he said it's ours. Right? It's not what the Most High said. It's that he said. Listen to me. It's not what he said. doesn't matter what he said. It's the fact that he said that makes me move. Right? It's that he said it. Not what he said. The fact that he said it is sufficient enough for me. I don't need anything else. And there is a place, a high place, that you can operate on if you understand in that capacity how to move and possess things and how to get the most high to continue to communicate with you. There's a level up there, not down here. Because if you operate down here, you become marginalized to a system that is advantaged white people, right? And so you're operating in a disadvantaged system and you're operating like them. But they got the resources and you don't. Which is why you find yourself in last place all the time. Raygun, thank you for that $7. What I'm saying to you, make sure you guys like the video. There is a level of thinking. If you could tap into what I'm saying that elevates you above, above the common realm of operation that has advantage the system and white folks that are in the system. And I'm trying to make you understand so that you won't stop and try to study how to get to this place. Stop and try to figure out how you're gonna get the resources to get to that place. I'm trying to tell you there is a place of creation. Once you know that he said it, it is up to him to accommodate you along the path. Right? So the teaching comes in the move. Not in the gathering through carnal means thinking you're going to help the Most High in order for you to achieve what he's already told you is yours. The only thing you can do is move. That impresses him. That impresses him. Get up, move, based on that he said. You understand? A little bit, shut up. So, little bit. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There, again, Remember, I'm trying to give you something. I want you to get it because it's for the remnant out there. It's for the remnant out there because when the most high, little bit, if you don't shut up, girl, when the most high, because the most high have given many people many promises, but they don't know how to operate in order to achieve what he getting, what he said is yours. Because you keep operating in a carnal human realm that advantages the system. The system, the system is just a giant. When Caleb looked at the giants, he said we could take them. Not because Caleb necessarily thought that he was as strong as them. He didn't need that. All he needed is that God said. The only thing he needed was that God said. Not what God said. The fact that God had said something that is ours means it's ours. And all we got to do is move. The other people looked at the circumstances, looked at history, looked at what has happened before, 
and doubted. They didn't doubt Caleb. They didn't doubt Moses. They doubted the Most High himself. And when you doubt the Most High yourself, the scripture calls it an evil heart of unbelief. And there's a punishment for it. Their punishment was that none of them would make it in. And so they suffered 40 years like some of you are suffering. Some of you have been in a place and you know that God has told you something that belongs to you and you didn't just move. And so you've been sitting around waiting for the conditions to be right for you to move and you've been in that space going in a circle for 10, 20, 30, 40 years and haven't possessed nothing. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You have been in that space. That's not how the Most High operates. He don't operate by the systems of man. He could, care, he could care less about white supremacy. He could care less about whatever power or whatever advantages anybody have. That means nothing to him. He said it when he knew all that in the first place. And you don't think of it like that. I do. Which is why I look at this system and it means nothing to me. I don't care what advantage you got. You could have a billion dollars, it's just not big enough. God don't operate on the scale of humans. And I'm not going to operate on your scale. I'm going to tell you to come up hither. Where the real world is. Where there is an eternal world. A, an eternal thought process. Not just a limited temporal carnal thought process. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Again, some of you have got something from the Most High and you lost it. You lost it because when he told you, you didn't move. You stayed there waiting for all the circumstances to look right in order for you to move. And the Most High say, um... Why would I tell you something if I wanted you to operate at, at the level of mankind? Why would I tell you something if I want you to operate at a level that you have a disadvantage? The reason I told you, the moment I told you that I said is when you had your advantage. You never needed anything else outside of me telling you it belongs to you. You never needed anything else outside of the fact that I told you it's yours. Now, I know there's a lot of conscious people out there that don't believe in the Most High. I, it is uh, inconsequential to me what you believe and what you don't believe. Live your life the way you do, right? But there's not one person in this earth that could diminish the personal manifestations, the knowledge that the Most High has given me. Not one. Trust me, he's alive. He's alive. He's alive in my life, and it will continue to show. Because there's a lot of things that the Most High said belongs to me. And there's a lot of things that I'm moving right now to possess. When other people would think it would be impossible for me to possess. But the Most High, the Most High said, Andre, everywhere that the soles of your feet shall touch, you shall possess it. And I'm just that crazy enough to believe everything that he said to me. So when you think like that, and when you're operating, right, everybody that's in that carnal level of operating are seeing pitfalls that you are oblivious to. They see all the pitfalls because they're thinking from a carnal mind, not a spiritual insight, carnal mind. And so there's certain things they can't even see. They talk about that's a pitfall. And you say, oh, no, that's just an opportunity. The scripture said the carnal mind is not subject. Thank you, loco, 10 for that 10. The carnal mind is not subject to the things of God. Neither indeed can be. So while they're operating, they're operating with carnality. And so they're subjected to the carnal things of the world. And you're moving, and every move they make, they're making it in fear and hesitation. And you're moving around just like that. 
Because you're seeing in a spiritual plane, you're seeing the end, the result of your movement. And they can't see what you see. So they're always so apprehensive around you. I've had to experience it myself. You know, and trying to educate people and explain to people around me that didn't think like me. And I just said, you're just going to have to watch me move. You're just going to have to watch the manifestations of my movement. Then you'll understand. Right. And they did. And they continue to see things continue to happen. And they don't know how the heck this keeps happening. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you. It is time for us to tap into what was already ours. Um, this is a time for black people. The world is calling for black people. The Most High gave me a dream about that more than a decade ago. I'm not shocked by the rising up of the conscious era of who we are as a people. I'm not shocked by that. I, I'm an expectation of that. I expect that. But I also know that there's only going to be a remnant of us that get it. Because some of us are so damaged that we refuse to believe. The scripture says, unless you believe, you will in no way be accomplished. And those who put away faith have made shipwreck. So there's millions of us around this country that are in shipwreck. Because you refuse to believe. Which is why I say I can care less about somebody who calls himself conscious and don't believe in the Most High. Manifest your God. Let's see if he's the real God. What is the evidence, again, in your life that reflects these unusual miracles that are nothing but normal things to people who live in a spiritual plane? This is a day to the average uh, human being of the miraculous. Listen to what I'm telling you. This is a day to the average human being in the earth of the miraculous. They will conclude that these are miraculous things going on. There was a woman, her name is Gail. She works for uh, uh, the city executive, Dow Constantine. And after we accomplished uh, the police accountability, Gail said, uh, this was miraculous. When the world begins to say, this is miraculous. You know what I'm saying? Not church folks, because church folks will go and testify that Jesus helped them change a tire. And that's supposed to be miraculous. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. I'm talking about when the world recognizes, like they did in the Old Testament, that this indeed is miraculous because then they begin to fear that the most high is indeed real when when the miraculous happens to the average human being fear will fall on the people reverence fear of the most high reverence of Yahweh, reverence of you but there's no miraculous why is the church so weak? Nobody is worried about the church. Let me tell you who got more power than the church. The LGBTQ community, they're more powerful than the church. You see, I don't really talk on uh, current events, but I'm just making a point. You see this stuff with Kevin Hart? And not just him. Somebody speaks out something about uh, the LGBTQ community and you automatically recognize the power that they have. You don't see no power like that in the church. Ain't nobody worried about church folks doing or saying anything. Do you understand that? And also, the average person in America understands that if you say something about LGBTQ, then this gonna be some drama. People are in fear. You gotta step down from this and then apologize about this and that and the other. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just making a point. This is a time for the miraculous for you and me. Now, uh, it's not that I'm harping all the time on police accountability or whatever, but I'm, I use it as a point. So I come from nothing, 
right? So the average human being thinks. But in this state, in this city now, I draw a lot of power. And people are in fear if something goes awry that I'll raise up 5,000 people in our community and I'll make some changes. And not just black people, all people. There's a fear, an honest fear because of the work. Because people could see the manifestation of something. And that gives them a healthy fear that if we do this, there's going to be a strong pushback. Do you understand? So whether that's the governor, uh, mayors, police chiefs, or the like, they know through the evidence of what they've already seen, the miraculous, as Gail said, that obviously something is with me. Enough to make them apprehensive. Enough to bring them to the table for us to have this conversation before there's drama. And it ain't drama as you suppose, like it's going to be some shooting going on. Or we're going to get violent and then go burn up something. Oh, no. None of that. Brilliance. Brilliance. Bringing a clear intelligent message that reaches all people, that appeals to the great in people, the good in people, to organize, to change things, to educate the population, and to engage and make them powerful in this scenario. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I have seen some conscious folks. Nobody's scared of them because they haven't seen the manifestation of anything that makes them cautious. They haven't seen that. There's no consequence behind it. Um, let me share this with you. My grandson got hit by a car on Wednesday. He's okay. It was a police car. It was an unmarked police car. It had a little sign on there on the, on the side, and there was another regular state patrol car behind him ran him over, he was underneath the car, broke his eye up here and down below. Went to the hospital on Wednesday and saw him and he's with me now for the weekend. I wanna love on him and heal him up and you know, uh, make sure that he's resting well and everything. So I, I got him and his, his two brothers are at the home with my daughter, his mom. Now, um, at the time, I'm sure they didn't know that that little boy, nine years old, was my grandson. But I can guarantee you, the moment they found out that that was my grandson and that that officer that ran over my grandson didn't get out the car one time to check on him while he was underneath her car, didn't bother to get out of the car to see if he was okay. And the other officer was the one talking to my daughter. Even when the ambulance come, that one officer didn't get out. Didn't even have the courtesy to do the human thing. You don't think they are concerned? You better believe it. And it's not because I'm speaking now. It's because the work they've been able to see. Do you understand? The church have not shown any work to the gravity that God showed in Egypt when Egypt was brought down to his knees. And I want to communicate why that hasn't happened. Because no one is fearful of the church. Because the church has seeded the world. The secular world. The political world. They've given it over to the world. And refuse not to involve their self in every activity in this world. Because we're supposed to be conquerors. So I'm saying to you. You can say all you want to say. But once you produce the miraculous 
is when they fear. Now let me tell you this. Because they know I'm not violent, nor do I promote any violence. I think it's a weakness. As if I can't outthink you. As if we can't have a debate on issues. Please, I welcome that. Which is why I talk to everybody. And those who disagree with me. Our mayor up here, Jenny Durkin, I don't agree with her with everything. But she's my friend, I consider her. I don't have to agree with her on everything. I didn't agree with my father on everything and I loved him more than anything. So some people think that somehow you can't have a conversation with somebody you disagree with. That sounds crazy. You disagree with your own brother or your sister at home. I'm grown around here. I'm powerful around here. That's little itty bitty stuff. Of course, come let's have this conversation. So I've developed relationships with people. I can call the police chief right now. I can call the mayor right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that to brag. I'm telling you what happens when people can see your work, which is why I keep encouraging you to shut your mouth and do the work and let the work speak for you. You out there asking for power, I'm trying to show you how to get it. Just because a rapper out there got some money, that don't mean nothing in this system. You don't got no power. You're not politically connected. No one fears if you go out there and write a song about the system. That means nothing. You can't organize 5,000 people like this. White, black, brown, native, Latino, Asian Pacific Islander. You don't got that. Nobody trusts you enough. You ain't even did enough work to show your brilliance and your genius to be able to command that many people at one time that will come support you. Or the governor or whatever. Do you know how many people supported 940? Everybody that meant anything. The whole city council formally, formally endorsed it. The, the mayor, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the uh, sheriff, the governor. Uh, 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 senators, everybody. I'm trying to teach you how to get real power and it's only through the evidence of your work. I didn't go out here saying, I'm about to go be powerful. No, 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 that ain't how I started. I started because the Most High said something belonged to me. Do you understand? I'm going to go back there. He said something belonged to me. Because he spoke to me in a dream one time, and he said the police force is corrupt. And I knew at, there would be some day that I would deal with it. A1, thank you for that $7. I knew one day I would deal with it. And when that opportunity came, I knew what it was all about. I knew it was time to go. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't go in no situation because I'm seeking for some power. I can give a less about power. The power belongs to the most high. I went because he said it belonged to me. And whatever the residuals of me going that manifested, that's just what it was. But the most important thing, like I said earlier, is the fact that he said it. That he said it. The fact that he said it belongs to me. That one word is more important than any and everything in my life. That's how I value the word of the Most High. There is nothing that even comes a little bit close to it to me. Not my wife, not nothing, not nobody. Not even close. So I'm saying, I know a lot of us Look at the entertainers and the famous people, and I want to be rich. That's not enough. You see when people try, almost get into some type of trouble, what happens to them? No, what you see, they have no political power behind them. No political support behind them. And people with all that money are able to do whatever they want to seem to do to them because there's no political clout. You let that it happen if that scenario had happened over in this part of the country. I would have called the LGBT community together 
And I would say, let us have a conversation because I have many friends that I love that are a part of that community. Right? And I would, I would explain to them, uh, this right here is about to be a problem. And uh, the beneficiary of this problem is going to be the system that's of both you and I, of both them and us. Right? Against the black community and the LGBTQ community. So let's come together and talk. Right? And let's clarify these situations and let there be understandings of both sides. Freedom, liberties, and understandings on both sides. Right? But, and the man did it years ago and had addressed it years ago. So now I'm going to have a problem. Because there's a whole bunch of I, I stuff I did years ago too. In my life. You know what I'm saying? So you're leaving no opportunity, no point of, re, uh, of redemption, of growth, of maturity, or what have you. Or elevation or involvement. So you want to punish this man for what he did years ago when the man is not the same man. Well, then you want to punish me then. And then you want to punish anybody in my community that might not have an understanding about it. I even did a video on uh, the LGBT community last year, year and a half ago on my, um, on my uh, 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 YouTube channel. I got a little um, uh, hat thing on. I'm dressed up in my, you know, garb and stuff. But I addressed some issues because I wanted both sides to understand. I wanted our community to understand, and I wanted them to understand some things. But we got to be in conversation. And I don't have to leave that conversation agreeing with you about everything as long as I respect you and we can have a mutual respect for one another, we can leave as friends. I don't have to agree with everything. You don't have to agree with everything. That's not what I require in a friendship because I don't know a friendship like that. I don't know a friendship like that. But for you to try to, for anybody to try to demonize him, if you was around here, you gonna have some problems. And they wouldn't have done it. They wouldn't have done it. Do you understand? I'm just talking to you about clout and political power. Right? Because now that gives you an opportunity for people to pause and say, let's have this conversation because now it might turn into something that might affect all of us and we don't want that. Let's get some clarity. You know? And I've never had a conversation um, with somebody that belongs to the LGBT com community that we didn't have great conversations together. Because I don't even look at them like, oh, they're LG. I, I, don't, that, that, I love them. That's my, that's my folks. Um, one of my favorite people in the world is Leslie Cushman. She just had a birthday, 63 years old. She's been down with not this time from day one. She's an attorney. But not only that, she's been an advisor. And she's a friend. And she is fighting for racial justice harder than anybody I know. One of the most busiest women doing the work that I know. And she is beautiful. Inside, I love Leslie Cushman. Are you serious? I love her. Whatever she does with her wife, Jody, I love her too. But I've seen her work. And her work allows me to at least see her in a different light. Right? It's just because we don't know one another. We don't have these conversations. So we're able to, things can be extraordinarily extreme. Right? So let me get back on what I'm trying to say to you. It's all in the work. And the Most High has given us something. It's our time. I'm not, listen, I'm not racist against anybody. I think anybody that, that um, hates somebody because of their color, they are a character flawed individual. And I look at them like that. You could be a billionaire and despise or hate someone because of their color, and I look at you like an undeveloped mind. You are a child to me. I'm not impressed in any capacity because no matter what you're doing, you are so character flaw, and at any time, that character flaw could make you and cause you to do something that is unrighteous and not just. And so I have to look at you and understand that with this flaw, there's that potential. Do you know what I'm saying? So... Um, you know, I have children that are mixed with Asian, mixed with white. You know, I have, you know, so I have, uh, uh, my wife is black and white. She's a black woman, but her dad is black, her mom is white. 
you know? And like I told you guys before, I'm not one of those black males who says these conscious that feels that they can only contribute to their own community. I don't believe that way. Uh, I believe I can lead all people. And so when I look at the world in, its global, in, in a global perspective, I think about leading all people. I'm not thinking about just leading our people. Of course, there are particular things and needs that our own community have, and those things need to be addressed, which is why I do Daily Fire for our community. You understand? But as far as not having the capacity to lead everybody, well, you've minimized yourself. You said somehow you don't have the genius that other races have or other countries have when they feel they can lead all people. You know what I'm saying? So you can't go out and thinking that, you know, you're not qualified enough, educated enough, well-rounded enough to lead all people. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is just educational things for us. Because when I'm having these conversations, I'm not concerned about anybody outside of our community necessarily, even though everyone is welcome. Because there's particular things that apply to you that you can understand in a different kind of way. You know? But this is all educational things. All education to show you your advantage in what you think you're disadvantaged in. It's time for you to tap into that advantage. I have tapped into that advantage. All right? And I operate in that every day, as I've told you guys many a times. Every day. All right? So, when the Most High gives you something, He says it's yours, go get it. Go get it. Stop waiting. Don't be like Rita used to be. Of course, Rita's not that way as much anymore. You know, but you have to be careful because once you start listening to the information, you know, and then you go back and you, you get away from the information for a while, people are predisposed to go back to that behavior that they're so comfortable with. So you got to be careful, right? Because you could get the information and then don't apply the information and you'll find yourself back doing what you did years ago because you're so comfortable to being that person right so you got to be very very careful you got to keep replacing inputting and replacing input new information replace that new that old information with the new information so that you can begin to draw from the new information when situations comes that's going to need you to think in that spiritual level that gives you the advantage you understand what i'm saying but you got to replace that old man that old energy, that old thought process with the new information. You can't do it on your own. You got to fill yourself up with the new information. So when that situation comes, you don't have to react or respond out of that old person, that old way of thinking that causes the system to have the advantage on you, right? Because that carnal way of thinking is relegated to the system and the system has advantaged white people. So you are at a disadvantage and you're at the bottom. Right? So you need to get the new information to operate out of the new information, which is a spiritual mindset. That gives you the advantage. It don't even matter what the system is saying at that time. It doesn't even matter what advantages the system have at that time. The only thing that matters is your spiritual intuition and your spiritual outlook that allows you to see further, wider, broader than the carnal mind is subjected to seeing. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's what we need to understand because it works. But you got to go to work, baby. You got to go to work, baby. Right? You should be so excited about the new information and about what the Most High has for you in your present and in your near future. This is an exciting thing because it's a gift to you. Because everything is timing. A hundred years ago, uh, uh, the scripture said that in the last days, knowledge will be increased. A hundred years ago, it wasn't time for us to have what the Most High is going to do now. It's up to him. He can choose whatever time he wants to elevate things, take down things, because the Most High says, I build kingdoms, I take them down, I build them back up. The Most High is in control of the time. BBT, 22TT, thank you for that 20. The Most High is in control of the time. Do you understand? So now that it's time, are you going to be like Caleb and said, give me what's mine? <laughs> and then go at it with so much 
fierceness. You know, I had a dream one time. And like the enemy appeared to me in the dream. Of course, I couldn't see his face, but he appeared to me in this dream. And it was like he was doing things in, in, in the dream to a lot of people on the streets and stuff, right? And so it was like um, I was casting out demons or something. This is in the dream, right? And uh, on the street. So then I got into this bus, and I knew on the bus it was Satan himself. This was in a dream. And so Satan said to me, I've never seen God in such a violent manner that I see him in you. And I understand why he said that. Because the scripture says that since the days of John, the kingdom of God has suffered violence. But the violence, the violent take it by force. So there is a disposition inside of a son of God a son of the Most High, who becomes a little God. There is a disposition in him where he knows who he is, walking as a little God, I said that to you guys before, in the earth, and there's this fierceness, this un, undoubtedly feeling, like undoubtedly I'm him. You know what I'm saying? And uh, there's a fire, a spiritual violence, so to speak, an authority in the world, you know? And you could feel the lion come out when it comes down to the Most High and His Word. And that's what He wants to build today. That fire, those lions, the tribe of Judah to take back its rightful place in the earth. Yeah, can you feel that? Can you feel the anointing of that, the fire of that, the authority of that? Ronnie, thank you for that 50. Right on time, family. You feel that fire, that authority, that knowing who you are in the earth, no doubts, no confusion. When you walk in, they can see it in your eyes. I remember when James, I told you guys a story about James, who I thought was an angel, who, who, um, who I met one time downtown when I was in the shelter around when I was 16, 17 years old. One of the things James told me, he said, when you come, they will know it because they will see it in your eyes. Right? So, again, listen close. There are many people who will come saying that I am the Christ, that I am the Messiah, and they're not. Be careful. Everyone that is born of the Most High understands that he is submitted, yielded under the Most High and come to do a task for the Most High. One time, the Lord spoke to me and said, you don't have a ministry. You have an operation. And I looked up ministry and I looked up the meaning of operation because I wanted to be clear about what he was saying to me. And this was many years ago. You don't have a ministry. You have an operation. Do you hear the military tone? Not as you suppose, because you guys think military is carnal. I'm talking about the spiritual militant, right? The ones that create, you know, in the eternal world, how to move and maneuver in an in a, in a eternal world where things happen in the in the spiritual realm before they manifest in the flesh. That is what I'm talking about. And I told you guys I wanted to talk about spiritual things today. Right? But, oh, let me say this. I thought about this. When I move on what the Most High said is mine, I don't just move. This is how I move. I move with my life on the line. I'm getting a sip of water here. I move with my life on the line. In other words, I say with that word the Most High has given me. I put my life in the word and says, I give you my life. I am dead right now. 
because there is nothing that I elevate more than this word that you has given me. I'm dead, right? So anything that tries to oppose it must understand that you are not opposing me because I'm dead. I have become the word that God has have given to me. Did you hear that? I am the very word that he has given to me. That's how powerful the word is. It consumes you because it's so much bigger than you. It's anything in your life. It's so much bigger than anything you can think of. I become that very word. Do you understand? The scripture. Until jo God gave Joseph a dream years ago. That dream did not manifest. You don't understand just me? Okay, well, you're going to have to keep listening. That dream did not manifest into Joseph's life until, right? Joseph was his father's favorite son. The other sons were jealous of him, sold him off into Egypt. He became a servant in Potiphar's house. He was starting to grow up. He was perfect in what he was doing. Potiphar's wife loved him. Tried to make him have sex. He ran. She grabbed his coat, lied on Joseph, and said Joseph tried to rape her. Joseph went to the dungeon, and Joseph in his mind is thinking, God gave me this dream about who I would be in my future. And the very opposite stuff has happened. The very opposite. So the scripture says in Psalms, until Joseph's Word came. The word of the Lord tried him. I'm going to break that down to you. So what God promised Joseph, because Joseph became the very word that God promised him. It was no more his life. It was only what the Most High had given him that mattered, right? So the scripture says, until what God promised Joseph came to pass, the very promise tried him. Because when God promised Joseph that, he was 17. He didn't get to the manifestation until he was 30. All those years he was tried. Because he understood how big the word was and how big the promise was. And he was no more himself, but he was only that word. That's deep. He was only that word. I'm saying, when God gives me something, it becomes bigger than everything in my life. And I pursue it as such, regardless of the obstacles. In my mind is that he said it. And I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. We talk on spiritual things today. Make sure you like the video. The spiritual man, the man you are, the first man that you were, that you lost, that you gave up your rightful place in the earth because you wanted to be carnal like everybody else. Because you looked at it in the carnal man, you thought it was nice. Oh, give us a king like everybody else has. And now that you got everything, everything that you think everybody else has, you normal like them. You think normal like them. Money is the most important thing to you. So your daily pursuit is money. You know what I'm saying? It's, cut, it's cutthroat with you. It's all about me. All of that stuff has never been you. You lost your rightful place. That's why you think like an animal instead of think like a God. I don't think like an animal. I think like the most high. And I don't have to sit here and pump my chest. I can show you the evidence continually, which is always what I point you guys to. I'm only trying to make sure the remnant gets it. Who cares about the people out there that's talking with it? They're they going to be last. They're going to be last anyway. You can't worry about people out there uh, understanding. 
they trying to look at this thing from a carnal mind. The scripture said, my sheep know my voice and another they won't follow. So this message is getting right to where it's supposed to be. To the remnant out there, to that chosen few. Calvin, thank you for that 20. This ain't for everybody. I'm sorry. It's not for everybody. It's for you, that remnant that could hear it, apply it. It's for you, which is why we're never concerned with numbers around here. We don't celebrate numbers. We celebrate the remnant around here. The remnant. All right. What kind of questions you guys got for me? What kind of questions you got? I'm ready to answer a few. Be sure to hit that like button, you guys. Did you guys see, uh, did you guys listen to the Blog Talk radio show with me and Judge Joe Brown? It's good. It's a good show. You need to go check it out. Uh, I got the link up on my Facebook page. Uh, Andre L. Taylor uh, It's my Facebook page. Yeah, Andre L. Taylor. Andre Taylor or Andre L. Taylor? One of those. This is my Facebook. I got the link up. You should go check it out. How do you dis... Oh, you must say, how do you discern God's voice? You don't discern the Most High's voice. There is no way in the world uh, a being created by the Most High will not recognize the Most High's voice. Right? The Spirit of God operates in all kinds of different ways. But when the Most High wants to get over to you, He done created everything in existence. You actually think you gonna, he, he gonna have a hard time getting over to you what He wants to say to you? You just ain't listening. Many people haven't been listening for many, many years. You, can't, you don't listen and you can't see because everything is carnal. I'm trying to tell you and teach you how to get in a space where you're able to hear. The scripture said, if this gospel be hid, is hid from those who the God of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not. You're blinded because you are a non-believer. What can I do? I can't do nothing for you. I'm not here for people who don't believe, but then go believe what you want to believe then. This ain't for you. But for you remnant that want to believe and be empowered, by this information and to begin to reflect it in your life because remember it's the evidence that make the world recognize that the most high is here the evidence that's what we talking about over here we ain't talking about just throwaway words this is a miracle healing service this is a miraculous service people we're gonna pray for the sick all that stuff there ain't nobody produce nothing people tired of that corny stuff i'm trying to sell people stuff you know that ain't nothing real that ain't no gravel. That old soft stuff. You can't reach no real man with that mess. You give us some real evidence. Real enough where the world can say, that's miraculous. Because we can't depend on you because you done watered down what miraculous is in your churches. You done watered down what a miracle is in your churches. But the world will keep you real. It will keep you straight. It'll investigate when you got things in your ears trying to tell people uh, their address and all that when you done looked it up somewhere. The world will investigate that foolishness. When the Most High does the miraculous to the average mind, you ain't got to do no investigation. It'll be so profound, so transparent that the world will be fearful and they will say that's miraculous and acknowledge the Most High. That's what I'm talking about. Whose manhood was bigger, Joseph's or Solomon? Hold on. Um, I love Joseph a lot more than Solomon. You know, I love Joseph because Joseph had to stand in some condition where his life was on the line and be tested underneath that fire. And he stood in that condition. I love Joseph. Joseph is one of my favorite characters. Uh, Biblical figures in, in the scriptures. Uh, 
Um, that's a long story, uh, who I got the information from. But it was over a process because I had a dream in 1999, and I spoke about this before in one of the Daily Fires. And in the dream, it was a vision, and God was telling me, in, ten, in 20 years from now, this was 1999 when I had the vision, in 20 years from now, I will cause a star to fall from the heavens unto the waters on the earth, and there will be fire everywhere. And men will try to flee from the fire on the earth to the water, but the fire in the water will be hotter than the fodder fire on the land. And he said that this would happen 2019 at Christmas time. So in 2019, I don't know what that's going to look like. I'm just telling you what he told me. He didn't give me no information about it. He didn't say it was the end of the world, but I know that there's going to be some, something very obvious that happens, and that's what he told me. So we'll see, right? So, um, so later on, I, uh, I, as, as I was doing some reading and found out that the first slave ship came to America in 1619 in, uh, in Jamestown, landed in Jamestown in 1619, and I thought about 1619 to 2019, that's 400 years, and begin to run, run yeah, and, and to talk about the 400 years of slavery, it just all started clicking in, boo, 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 it was like, like snowball, but it, it was over a period of time, you know, because I had that dream back in 1999. So then I understood why he was telling me that, because it's, the scripture says in Genesis 14 uh, about when, when, when the Most High put Abraham asleep and gave him that vision. Talk about your ancestors were going to slavery in a foreign country for 400 years. But then he says, but after the fact, um, I will punish the nations that have done this and I will bring you out into a wealthy place. So those are prophetic things that lined up to the vision he gave me in 1999. He just gave me a particular time that's going to happen and he said it's around Christmas time. Uh, uh, yeah, in, in 2019. So I was in, I was in a federal holding when I had the dream, too. You know, I was in North, La North Las Vegas Detention Center when I had that vision. It was a vision. And uh, as a matter of fact, I put that vision in my book, and I put a lot of other things that I had been taught through the Most High in my book, The Road to Paradise, so people could be assured that it wasn't something I just said, but I have the evidence to prove back... I wrote my book back in 1999 when I was in prison, in jail, in 2000, and got out and got it published around 2004 or something. And uh, so all that information is in my book to prove uh, that I was think that uh, you know I was talking about 1999 way back, and tw and 20 years from now, which is 2019, uh, back then. So yeah, that's how. Yeah, I have a favorite verse in the Bible. Unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that I could ask or think. That's a big challenge for me. For the Most High to say that to me, I'm like, really? Him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than I can ask or think? Really? Okay, well, let's put that thing to the test then. <laughs> Let's put that thing to the test. Yeah, that's him for me. Do you have any fears? There's none that I can think of that I have right now. Any fears? No. You know, the scripture says that um, the thing that Job most greatly feared came upon him. And Job was a phenomenal person. Phenomenal black man. You know, but uh, he would get up every morning and pray for his children because uh, he thought that they had sinned against God while they was partying and everything. And he had nine kids and um, nine or ten kids. And he prayed for them every morning in fear. He wasn't praying in faith. He was praying in fear. And that fear gave place to a situation that manifested. And we know it by the scripture saying the thing that Job most greatly feared came upon him. So I don't deal in fear whatsoever. Uh, vegetarian, vegan, back and forth. 
you know, my wife loves, you know, cheese, organic and stuff. So sometimes we'll eat that or might eat uh, some salmon or something like that periodically. But I'm back at my normal weight, you know, uh, 164, 165. I'm about 5'9", 164. People, when they see me, they say, man, you, I thought you was real tall. Now, everybody in my family is real tall. My brothers, my dads, uncles, they was all 6'2 and up. I took after my mom. I'm 5'9", you know. But I didn't mind growing up because I was knocking them tall little lanky, lanky boys in junior high and high school. <laughs> well, give me that girl. you lanky. <laughs> yeah, it never was a problem to me. I'm a, I think that's the perfect size or something. Who cares? I don't care nothing about that stuff. Yeah. It never, it always worked for me. 5'9", 165. Eric Miller, do you ever took a long time to act something God told you that you wish you... Of course, because in the process, which is why I can come to you, he asks if I ever took a long time to act on something. Uh, yes, you know, I did. And uh, this is how I had to learn. You know, I didn't have nobody giving me the information like I'm giving you, though. I didn't have anybody doing that for me. You know, so, you know, mine was by a lot trial and error. You know, uh, but... You know, it wasn't many times. It wasn't many times. It's probably when I was real young at 16. Slick Money, thank you for that 50, loved one. I appreciate you too, family. Appreciate you. I, under, pick, pick Todd. I understand that God said vengeance is mine and never take vengeance on those who do evil, but I make, but how do I make peace with the wickedness of my fellow man? Thanks for the help, Sophia Boy. So, um, that's a good question, and the scripture does say, vengeance is mine, and there are a lot of situations that have happened in my life, Keith Bass, thank you for that 20 family, that I've allowed, um, you know, because first of all, it's how you think about it first, right? Now, you got to make sure that you're using that spiritual mind and not that carnal man. Because that carnal man will make you be in a reactionary mode, right? But that spiritual man will make you be in a responsive mode. you got to be careful. You know how you juggle those two. Because wherever you're at is going to indicate how you react on something or respond to something. So you got to be real careful. So there's been many incidences where people have done anything, and I already knew because of how I believe in God's word that the results or consequences for that person were incredibly severe. You know, I never wanted to take uh, vengeance back on anybody. You know, I really believe in God's word. And I can tell you, anybody uh, that have tried to do harmful things to me didn't end up well. It just didn't. Because, you know, there are things that I don't even know about how God has been instrumental working for me. I don't need to worry about them. All I know is that that's what I know he'll do. Do you understand? I don't have to sit around worrying about God doing his job. I don't worry about that. I'm very confident in the fact that he cares for me, that he loves me, you know, and he going to take care of me. I'm confident of that. The reason why God don't take care of a lot of you is because you don't know what it is to serve him. You don't know how to serve him, which is why I have to share with you what he requires of you, right? You don't know how to serve him. And a lot of things, I can, I can guarantee you, just nothing can happen to me. Oh, I know it. Just can't nothing happen to me. I am overly sure of that. Can't. Because the way I serve him. Remember, all that I am, all that I am is that word that he's given me. And that word is bigger than all things in existence. My word have I elevated above my own name. Right? And so whatever's against me, you end up fighting against the most high. Sometimes I might have a little anxiety if I have to take care of a lot of business at one time or something. But I don't operate in anxiety. Yeah. What's up, baby? I'm a wifey. So let's see what else we got, fam. Okay, I'm glad you got that, bro. Blessings to you. 
It's time for you to ask some questions, you guys. Let's, let me know what's on your mind. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help out over here. I'm trying to build up the people. We're trying to build up the people around here. We're not playing. You know, that remnant is getting prepared. You know, and the beautiful thing about timing, God's timing, is he knew that uh, Relentless Mac, $5. Thank you, love. Thank you, family. Love one for that $5. So the Lord knew the time that he was going to use to begin to uplift the, the original um, nation of the, of the uh, original Israelite, the tribe of Judah. And he knew that we've had the possibility of technology that this right here can go all around the world. All around the world. This device right here, it go all the way around the world. And so I could reach out right here and get that remnant ready. Let them know it's time. Give them the information to study and to get their self uh, submitted and yielded underneath the Most High. This is that time for that remnant. So this, he chose a perfect time, and I see why now. Uh, let me see. Pick said he didn't realize he didn't trust God's word and the problem rests with him to trust God's word. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, somebody asks, who's that? Let me see. Why is marriage so difficult? Go in there and read. Go over there and look at the daily fire with me and my wife, Dub. Go check that out. That'll help you. Is it bad to feel fed up with ignorance? I'm fed up with ignorance right now. Of course not. You know, but the best way you're going to deal with ignorance is that you get yourself right and, and learn how to lead so that people can be impacted by the manifestation of your life. 12,000 Israelites from 12 tribes are about 144. What's your thoughts about the end time? The good thing is, is I don't have to know everything, and I don't. I know what I know, and what I don't know, I have to wait for the Most High to give me the revelation of that. I'm not clear about that because those revelations have many interpretations and many people speak about many things that they think. I don't want to tell you what I think. I want to talk about what I know. So when God gives me the manifestation, the revelation about those things, and I can be clear and be 100% about what I'm telling you, I will speak on that. But other than that, I don't want to speak on what I don't know. That's wisdom because I love you too much for that. I love our people too much for that. King 0001, Dre, remember in one of your videos you talked about having a vision of a conqueror? How did you apply that to your faith and your movement? Well, um, if God, like I said earlier, if the Most High gives me something, it's mine. And, and that word that he gives me, it becomes me. I become it. So that gives me the ability to go out there and conquer because of his job. It then becomes the Most High's job to do his part. And I don't have to worry about his. I worry about mine which is moving. Uh, acknowledging God working within self requires a lot of confidence and responsibility on behalf of the individual. What would you say to those that don't have the confidence to activate that within? I say that the scripture says that a little mustard seed that's planted can grow into the most powerful tree. These things that I'm sharing is planting those seeds. And as long as you apply the things that I'm telling you, you will have that inside of you because the information produces that inside of everyone, right? There's nobody more special than anybody else. How much can you believe? That's what it's, how much can you believe? I can believe a lot, and I put my life on the line to believe. Scripture says anything is possible to him that can believe. How do you keep the information in your mind while dealing with everyday difficulty? Randy asked me. Uh, I remember somebody said when I was in uh, uh, Clark County Detention Center, was my Mexican friend. He said, I never tell God how big my problems are. I tell my problems how big my God is. I said, you know, I'm going to always remember that. And that's a great line. That's how I deal with everyday life. Because I tell my problems how big my God is. You feel me? Mr. Povo, Dre, what do you think about the books that were taken out? of the Bible, do you think they are valid? Uh, yes, I think the Apocrypha is valid. I think they're good for uh, um, spiritual strength. You know? Again, I don't go into the mystery or the mystic stuff of it. I'm more, I base more things on my personal experience 
and personal, man and personal manifestations that I have seen myself stick to your ribs. Uh, 10 to 10, thank you, family. Those personal, the personal manifestations are the most important things, right? Which is why I'm giving you the information to have a personal relationship and manifestation of the Most High based upon the evidence. Because then we can sit here and then we can create a whole new chapter of some type of religion and everything. That's not what I want to do. I'm not into that. We're talking about this is a time of the manifestations, right? Real ones. The church has watered that down so much. The scripture says, I will do in the last days, I will do a, do a new thing. Behold, now they will spring forth. The church is not that new thing. That new thing is what we're talking about right now. I love those brothers and sisters in the church, right? But they've been limited in the way they think about the most high. And God is going to shift that and change that. And hopefully a major portion of those brothers in those churches, uh, brothers and sisters in the churches, will be a part of that remnant that will get it and, and uh, you know, not be led astray into that foolishness out there. Because right now, you are not a part of the operational power of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. You are not a part of the manifestation of the Most High. Whatever the, You are not equivalent to what went on in the Old Testament. You are far beneath them. So you couldn't be the church of the latter day because God said the glory of the latter day will be greater than the glory of the former day. You could not do, you don't fit into that prophecy. So something is amiss over there, right? And I'm just pointing out through my own revelations and through my own appearances of the Most High what he's given me and why we're able to make the world fear while the world has to take note of what we're doing. And why they have to admit that this is the miraculous, right? That is how the Most High is moving. The Book of Enoch is so interesting. A couple of more family members. Drake, can you scroll up and check my question? Oh, boy, I don't know where you, where, where's that? How do you know when God is trying to tell you something and knowing that it's not just paranoia? Um, again, remember, this is the key. The first phase is getting yourself back in alignment with your thought process, right? Because if you're out of alignment, you're not in a space to be confident, confident about what you might think somebody, the Most High, is saying to you because you're not in alignment, because there's so many voices where you are. But when you're under submission and not in that carnal way of thinking, and when you have yielded yourself based upon a bunch of these principles that I've been talking to you guys about for many, many months now, then you begin aligned. And in that alignment, you can hear from the Most High now. A lot. Remember I said a lot of people can't hear and see because they're dead they're blind because they're out of alignment the most important thing is to get your life in alignment first that doesn't require you going to a church to do it right these things i've been teaching you is to get you in alignment as the remnant once you are in alignment you can rest assured the most high will come to you and speak to you but he don't listen he got millions of angels, if people want to call it that. He ain't desperate for no company. The scripture said the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking for them whose heart is perfect towards him, or to show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. He's like this, he's looking, right? Right? He looking, and I'm trying to tell you how to get in line so he could see you. Did you get that? So he could see you like he sees me. Kevin, thank you for that 20 family. Again, he can't see you. He can't see you, and you can't hear. So why would he spend time trying to communicate to you? You can't hear or see. You're out of alignment. J. Lyons, thank you for that tear. Let's get in alignment. All these things we've been talking about in Daily Fire, all these different subjects, 
is to just get you in alignment so that you can create, so that you can be in your first place that you were before, and so that we can go and get what he said is ours and be in the rightful place in this earth as the tribe of Judah like we were. That's what this is about. Get ready. A remnant of us, a remnant, We'll make sure it gets happen. It happens. It gets done. A couple of more questions, fam. Woo! How did you discover your dominion? Oh Lord, that's a lot. That's a whole new thing. But yeah, I've, I've talked about all that stuff before. I talked about how I got started before, where I was, what I thought. Some of these daily fires, you got to go through all that stuff. You got to go do the work, baby. Any of you that's on here tonight? Uh, make sure you like, and if you're on here for your first or second time or whatever, there's a plethora of information on Daily Fire that you should make it your business to go do your study. That's your homework. Let them, the system, they got Harvard, they got Yale, they got all that stuff. You go do your education about how the spiritual man is thinking versus that carnal stuff that the system has given white people an advantage on. But here is your advantage. Go do your homework. Right? It's yours for the taking. But you got to go do your homework so you can continue to align yourself to the information and then get the results and the manifestations that is necessary. Okay, hold up. A lot of people saying a lot of things at one time. Let me try to get them. Go, uh, Daniel, how do you do it? You go listen to that information. And apply it. It'll clean you. Uh, would you consider taking phone calls? I, ha I thought about it, but not now. How do you balance what your focus on community and sacrifice for the greater good? How do you balance that with your focus on community and the sacrifice of the greater good? Well, I don't know how I do it. It's just naturally in me to do it, you know? I didn't go to school for it or anything like that. The Most High put whatever ingredients in me that was necessary to fulfill the job. I feel lately, this is Michael, that I have been needing to sacrifice everything because I have not experienced homelessness or other help from friends and family. I am told this would grow me. What are your thoughts? I don't know about you sacrificing everything. Uh, the scripture said uh, you could sacrifice your body and not have love, and it's for not. Whatever you sacrifice, make sure it's aligned up with the Most High. You know, there are particular sacrifices that He wants you to do, and you make sure you line up with that, not what the world tells you, what He tells you. Don't go into a world, a carnal way of thinking about what sacrifice. You let the Most High, because the Most High actually thinks sacrifice is normal. He wants you to offer something to Him. Birds of a feather flock together. Does that mean that they agree upon everything? Pretty much, yep. Due diligence is key. Yep. What's up, too cool, too con? Any chance Dominion Part 2? Extremely heavy. Yeah. Most likely we're going to do a Dominion Part 2. What up, Mr. Taylor? Keep giving the real. Show sure enough, Lenny. Listen, I love you guys. Um, on to next week. Yes, obedience is better than sacrifice. Absolutely. Yeah, I told you guys now, not this time, is working on bail reform. And uh, the reason why we're working on bail reform is because they've used bail to punish poor people. You, you get a jaywalking ticket, get a petty crime ticket, or get a petty crime, they take you to jail. They give you a $2,000 bail, $5,000 bail. You know, you can't get the money like Sandra Bland. They gave her a bail of $2,000, $3,000. You can't get the money. You stay in jail for two weeks. You lose your job. You lose your housing. If you got kids, they take your kids away. They've been doing that to our communities forever. Well, that's going to stop. Not this time is working on bail reform to reduce bail having for to reduce you having to have ca cash to bail out, right? That's what we're working on next. We did police accountability. We're in the implementation stage of that police accountability. Now we're going after bail reform in any area that our people has been oppressed in, and uh, there has been injustice in. We're going to attack it. We're doing real work around here, you guys. Real work. So I, ultimately, I thank everybody for their support. Everybody. And then after bail reform, we're going to go to sentencing laws. We're going to work, man. 
We have a small window that the Most High has opened up to us. We have power on our side, authority on our side, coalition on our side, and we're going to use that to push in as much as we can to help our people. That's the job. That's doing the work. Bail reform is next. Not this time. We'll make sure they can't use bail to punish poor people. That is not going to happen no more. Not this time, baby. Love you guys. Talk to you next week.